Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. My name is Steven and this is the Storytime channel. Today we have some entitled parent stories, so let's jump right into our first story of the day by definition far, entitled Mother calls me four times, calls my boss two times, and texts me at work, saying it's an emergency. It wasn't. So my 51-year-old mother is an entitled mother to the max. Toxic family members? No problem, just forgive them. Constantly bug staff when I, 24-year-old female, was younger and would call the school whenever she got the chance to complain about something. Finally, she needs everything to go her way. Also constantly making me 20 minutes late to field trips and demanded they wait because she had to get ready. At my sister's wedding, she said she would help at 11am to set up, didn't get there until 5. Gift opening at 10.30, she got mad when they started without her. So yesterday she called my work number four times, my boss, I don't know how she even got her number as she doesn't know where I work, two times, and finally sent me a text message asking if I ever wanted a relationship with her. To which I responded with the following, Mom, I would love to have a relationship with you. However, some things have to change. I can't be answering these questions when you know I'm at work. You can't continue to gaslight me because I want a relationship with my father. My dad is my dad and just because he left you as a wife does not mean he left me as his daughter like you made me believe when I was younger. Which was completely wrong of you to take your emotions and to put them on me. I got to read all the paperwork. I know both sides. Divorces of parents with kids are never one-sided. You can have a relationship with me when I hear an apology for the things ex-stepdad put our family through including taking my door, letting stepbro get away with using my bras as his boy time rag, ex-stepdad and you constantly making fun of me in my personal life, asking what I was wearing or if I had drank when I told you both I was sexually assaulted and finally saying you're lying when I came out to you as bi. The teasing and the bullying has to stop. That means all of it. You do not get to play the sympathy card if I react badly to years of that crap from my siblings that you also contributed to. Stepdad, and yes, from you as well. That means no more making fun of me, my past, or my current partner, including making fun of our relationship. None. You need to seek help for your narcissistic tendencies. I am under no obligation to keep my hair blonde, give you grandkids, or to not donate my eggs to get a tattoo that I had no say in, or to visit you. You have no right to make me feel bad when I do things and you don't like them. I don't want to visit a toxic household when I know what will happen, so until you get a professional help for your past, I will see you on major holidays and special occasions. And now, I finally have peace and quiet. This is a very difficult situation, so let me ask you guys. Do you even think a situation like this would be mendable? It sounds like there's so many layers of deep-rooted issues that it'll really seriously need some professional help if there's probably going to be some kind of amends made. Let me know in the comments down below if you think this is a fixable situation. This next story is by Tacos and Chill Sauce, entitled Mother Wants Her Child to Ride a Young Horse, doesn't end very well for either of them. I was chilling around with my horse, feeding him carrots when I saw this. A woman, entitled mother, probably in her 30s, was arguing with my riding coach. He had put her son, TN, total newbie, on one of the stable's sweetest, safest old horses, and apparently that was just not good enough. First of all, total newbie's cousin rides horses, and so obviously total newbie knows more than enough to ride a better horse. How am I going to get good pictures with this lame old horse, huh? She said, our coach calmly told her that riding is a dangerous sport and so to keep her son safe while they did not know what his abilities were, they had to put him on this easy to ride horse. She said it wasn't dangerous at all because obviously this random lady who has a nephew who rides horses knows a heck of a lot more than my teacher who's been teaching riding for 30 years. Silly us. She looked around and pointed to a horse in a nearby stall. Yeah, that's a pretty horse. I want my son to ride that one. Now, the horse she wanted was young and a mare, and for those of you that don't know, that basically means, in most cases, that the horse is hard as heck to ride. Our coach told her no, and so she began to walk quickly in the stall's direction, saying that she'd had enough of this and would do it herself. The coach didn't want an injury to her, so he told one of the stable hands to take the horse out and hold her while he would just let the child hop on for the photos entitled Mother Wanted, as this would probably ensure as much safety as possible. 
So they got the horse out and got Total Newbie on and told Entitled Mother she could take her photos now. She stared at them in disbelief. Photos like this? You're too much. First of all, I don't want this random man in my photo, she said, pointing to the poor innocent stable hand. And secondly, I want it to be really cool, you know, so make the horse run or something, she said. The coach said there was no chance at all that they would do that. She sighed, shook her head disappointedly, and lurched towards the horse to physically pull her away from the stable hand. The horse got startled and reared up, that means standing on the two back legs, and was about to kick out when the coach went and steadied her calmly. Entitled mother and poor total newbie both went white. They had the nerve to tell the coach how unsafe and dangerous all this was when that was what we'd been telling them for the past 20 minutes. They stormed out very shaken and with no photos, shrieking that they'd never return. We were pretty glad to hear that. Yeah, these people have absolutely no respect for the safety of themselves and the people around them, and no respect for the horses themselves. That obviously must have stressed the horse out a pretty good bit because it went and reared up, which I don't think it would normally do if it wasn't stressed out. This next story is by It's Dank. Entitled Mother claims that she has connections to my dad. So this happened a few months back before the pandemic. So I used to work at a local shop owned by my father that I used to help out sometimes, and business was usually busy but not crowded in the shop. I have never had any customer come on with such a Karen ego as this woman. Entitled Kid was being dragged behind Entitled Mother, clearly not wanting to be here. The conversation went as follows. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am? My child is dehydrated and in terrible pain. This clearly was not the case as the child looked fine and not pale at all. Okay ma'am, uh, just find a drink and come and bring it to the counter and I can scan it right away. Entitled Kid says, Mom, I'm thirsty. Don't worry darling, I'll get you something in a minute. They walked off and came back with a Pepsi and a water. Entitled Mother placed the drinks on the counter and said to me, As usual, I expect these drinks to be free. Excuse me ma'am, but why would that be? I'm not familiar with my father's discounts. I'm married to the owner of this shop, of course. Which she clearly wasn't because my dad has a wife. Ma'am, that is wrong. You are not married to the owner of this shop. Of course I am. How would you know, you little poop? Ma'am, I am the son of the shop's owner. I have a mother and that mother is not you. Entitled mother looks shocked and then attempts to steal the drinks from the shop. Luckily, we have a security officer on the door managing people coming in, and he stopped Entitled Mother in her tracks. He called the police and she was arrested, and the child was safely delivered to the father. I'm just glad I'm not him. The kid was a nightmare. If the kid is kind of young, I don't really blame the kid. I would blame the mother more for the actions of the kid. Because I feel like the mother is the sole person responsible for raising the kid to have that kind of attitude, right? I mean, it seems like that's the most logical thing to me. Of course, the kid still has to follow through on that stuff, but if you have nothing but bad examples set forward for you, you probably will also just set the same bad examples. This next story is by Not a Trans Ponster, entitled in Racist Mother and Daughter Harass an Older Woman at the Supermarket. Firstly, I cannot believe I'm writing a post here. I've come across many entitled people in my life, and you just disregard it and move on. As for this story, I'm still shocked at what I saw and thought I would share it with all you here. As you all are most likely aware, there is a global pandemic. Therefore, as I am fortunate enough to work from home, I only leave the house if I have to meet a high-profile client or I need to pick up some items I am unable to find online. Yesterday, I went to my local supermarket, grabbed the items I needed, and headed to the till to pay. I was behind an older woman who was not white. I absolutely detest that I have to point that out, but you will understand why shortly. The lady in front of me began loading her items. I asked if she needed some help as she seemed to struggle. It was then I realized English was not a language she could speak well. Fortunately, I took a guess at what language she spoke and was correct. I used to specialize in immigration law and throughout my time as an immigration lawyer, I did manage to learn different languages. This helped as I would not always need to hire an interpreter. We spoke a little and she honestly seemed absolutely lovely. As I was helping her unload her shopping, a woman and her daughter line up behind me. 
in the words of the Joker in the Dark Knight, and here we go. Immediately, the woman begins to make huffing and puffing sounds as though everyone is an inconvenience. I ignored her and continued to help unload her items as the customer in front had nearly all of her items scanned. As I'm loading the items on the belt, the daughter of the lady behind me begins to pull at the scarf of the lady in front of me. She's tugging and begins to say, take it off. I look at her mom, hoping she will step in and stop this abhorrent behavior, but nothing. I can tell the lady is scared and trying her best to hold her scarf, but this little troll is tugging and making vile comments such as, this is not allowed, you need to take it off. At this point, I've had enough and it's evident her mother will not be stepping in. So, I tell her to stop it and that if she does not, I will get security to make sure she stops. I also tell her that her behavior is not nice and would she like someone tugging at her clothing? She tells me to be quiet and I then step in between her and the woman and sort of become a human shield over her to stop her. I did not want to touch the child. The lady grabs a hold of my hand and it is shaking. I felt so awful for her. I tell the cashier and she is billed for security. I relay this information to the lady in her language so that she can find some comfort in knowing security is coming. Enter the mother of the child who finally decides that she does not have a voice and can indeed speak up. She calls out the older lady for not speaking English and then asks me why I'm defending her and what language was I speaking to her. Then she asks why I, as a white woman, was speaking another language. I know, I know. I go ahead and tell her what her daughter was doing and that the behavior was not acceptable. I also told her that I found it shameful that she did not stop her daughter. She then tells me her daughter has autism. She is allowed to do this as it helps her stay calm. I refuse to accept that as a justification. Her daughter must be seven at least. It is entirely deplorable. That then starts her tirade of how wrong I am for defending someone like her and her people. How wrong I was for stopping her daughter and that I probably hate being white. Fortunately, at this point the security officers have arrived and can see and hear her making racist comments. One officer takes her trolley and asks both the mother and daughter to follow him. The daughter is kicking and screaming and the mother is swearing for all to hear as they follow him. The second security officer then speaks to the cashier and then asks me what happened. I explain the situation and he requests that I translate an apology on behalf of the store to the lady and that they will issue her a voucher at the customer service desk. He also asks if she would like to take this matter further, in which case we will need to come with him and make statements. I relay this information to her and ask her what she would like to do. She declines and says she is humiliated enough and would just like to go home. Whilst I had hoped we would take the issue further, I completely respect her choice and understood how demeaning it must have been for her. I offer to pay for her shopping and she declines. I insist further and the cashier allows it. She is incredibly grateful and had said some wonderfully kind things to me in appreciation. I did ask her if she would like me to drop her home, but she said no, she will take the bus. I refused and said if she was not comfortable in my car, that I will order and pay for a cab. Again, she was grateful and so wonderfully nice to me that I almost cried. I think at this point my emotions were all over the place. Because hearing her say how humiliated she felt was heartbreaking. No one should ever be treated in such a manner. We did part ways, but I gave her my number and said if I could ever be of help to let me know. I am not sure what happened to the mother and her spawn, but I imagine the manager would have had said some words and either banned her temporarily or indefinitely. There are security cameras everywhere, so the entire interaction would have been recorded, so she certainly could not decline anything. To any who may be wondering how the girl was pulling her scarf, it was the one that was draped over her head and the rest around her body. It would be described as a depata in most South Asian culture. I've seen many people behave like a-holes online and offline, but honestly, witnessing what I did yesterday and hearing what I heard come from the child, it was evidently all learned behavior. Truthfully, it is such a shame that hate is what she is teaching her child. 
I absolutely agree with OP. I think they hit the nail on the head right there with that last paragraph. It's the same situation as the last story. It's learned behavior, it's just the upbringing, and it's really unfortunate to see this kind of upbringing happening in this generation. At some point, we need to be able to get past this and move past this and accept people for being people. That said, our final story of the day is by LitCandle87, entitled Mother Tries to Use My Birthday Party as a Way to Socialize with Her Co-Workers and New In-Laws. Hello, longtime lurker here, also on mobile. This happened about four years ago on my 13th birthday, but I remember most of the details. My mother is a very controlling, manipulative person. She is also an alcoholic and we have a very strained relationship. On my 13th birthday, what I really wanted to do was go to my hockey game. We were playing a good team and I felt it would be an exciting game. My mom thought my birthday would be a good way to socialize with her new in-laws. She had just gotten married and with her co-workers and bosses. Literally a week before my birthday, my mom said that she was planning my birthday party. I asked her when it was and she said the same time as my hockey game. My hockey game was in the evening and I asked my mom if we could maybe do it the next day or the day before. My mom said no because my game was a Saturday night and she thought if my party was on a Saturday more people would be able to attend. My mom started guilt tripping me about what a big deal my 13th birthday was and how I just had to have my birthday party on that Saturday. I didn't have a spine to stand up to her then and I still don't so I just went along with it. All that I really wanted to do for my birthday was go to my hockey game and eat cookies and pizza with my teammates after. Just as I thought maybe the party could still be fun without my teammates, my mom told me I couldn't invite my friends because this was going to be a family celebration. At that point in my life, a lot more of my friends felt like family than my actual mom. But I still kept my mouth shut because I didn't want to send my mother on one of her rages. Just as I thought it couldn't get any worse, my mom told me we would be eating at the restaurant owned by the most notorious racist in town. At this point, I was pretty upset but not showing it because I just didn't want to spend any extra time with my mom than I had to. When she told me who would be coming, I just got more upset because most of the people were basically strangers. I have social anxiety, so I knew this would be a miserable experience. As I was preparing myself for a miserable Saturday night, something wonderful happened. I got food poisoning and my mom had to cancel my birthday party because I couldn't attend. It was somewhat satisfying because it was a sort of karma for trying to use my birthday for her own gain. Plus, she had to clean up a lot of vomit. This wasn't the only time she had tried to hijack my birthday, but since I don't really live with her anymore, hopefully it'll stop. I kind of feel this story a little too much and it's hard because in those situations they are so blatantly trying to manipulate things and act like it's all for you and it's all your idea and you don't want any of it and you can see right through it but you know if you're going to go against it that's going to make them blow up and you're just going to get an even worse situation than if you just complied with it and when it's your own mom or dad like that it really gets hard for you to be able to just stand up to that and accept the absolute rage that they can go into it's just an incredibly unfortunate situation for somebody to have to experience while growing up and i would argue that it really could mess people up too it's it's just so unfortunate to see. Hopefully, since OPs removed themselves from that situation, things will have gotten less stressful as time went on. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So if you have a favorite story of the day, let me know which story and why in the comments down below. But besides that, if you enjoyed the video today, please give the video a like and subscribe if you haven't and turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video. No matter what you did, whether it was just watching the video, subscribing, commenting, thank you all so very much for supporting me right here on the Storytime channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you all next time right here.